Hello my friend, today I have something which I didn't even realize still a thing. So let's take a look uh, at this box and see what I actually mean. In order to open this box I'm gonna use my beautiful well used CRKT Pazoda. Love this knife, taking all, always cam with me camping. That's why it's so <laughs> used and a bit abused. Mm -hmm. It's really really well packaged. You probably already read it on the box, but ta -da! this is best data cassette adapter. Why the hell I need that? Because I have oh my <laughs> Yeah, you, you should see that. I'm wondering, is this like Well, at least it's you can open this thing. Hoo hoo hoo! Haven't haven't actually ever seen that bad head. Anyways, but let's just start from the beginning. So I bought this thing because I wanted to play with the uh, uh, my deck or the the player and. Actually, instead of feeding the signal through the cassette or something like that, I decided to feed some test signals through this. Yes, this is cassette adapter, like this 3.5 millimeter jack to cassette adapter. Usually they was used back at the time in order to play MP3s, uh, MP3 music or whatever in your car stereo. But my idea, I bought it very cheap by the way, but my idea is to do something else. I would like to plop it in my... Um, a cassette Walkman or a cassette deck instead send some test signal through this lead and see what they're gonna get. So this sort of eliminates the problem uh, of a input circuit being faulty for example if you were try to record something or try to fix your deck and you don't know what's happening because it doesn't record properly so at least you won't will know that either it's a recording problem or it's a playback problem or things like that will help to identify where is the problem. This is my idea. So, so let's take a look what the hell we have here. So we have a 3.5 millimeter jack, some adapter over here, then we have this cassette thingy, which has a head over here, which is like, oh, it's actually pressable. So this hat looks like shit. Pardon me, looks like, I don't know, it's super, super beaded. Like, I'm wondering what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why it's so bad looking? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually shocked. I don't know, I, I, I don't know if it's even safe to use. Probably safe because there's no gonna be any mechanical uh, interaction with this hat, but it's so bad. Let, let me, let me try to zoom in, you will see. I hope you see that it's very very pitted and and faint. It's like it's like it was rusted and then was polished or something to this extent. Yeah, this is this is nuts. But anyways, I'm gonna take a look and um, how like I'm gonna assemble it and I will take a look what's going on inside. But yeah, this is crazy. Okay, well in order to disassemble it, obviously I have to unscrew all those whole bunch of bolts over here. And this screwdriver is no good. And let's try again. It's a bit better screwdriver for such purpose. Looks like it has some um, cogs inside. Wondering what, why is that for? Is it to confuse the um, cassette deck in order to actually trick it to think that it's actually a cassette with tape? Because this roller is going to be spinning, I think. Let me see, let me see. I'm curious. Alright, so here we are. Hey, open. No, oh, it's also, yeah. Snapped. Snapped, snapped, snapped. Shit. I don't care about those cogs, must say. This is probably the better side. This is interesting. What the hell is this? Hmm. 
Yeah, that's weird. It's kind of interesting. What's this for? Anyways, <coughs> so what we have? We have a hat, regular hat. I'm curious if this is actually a tape hat or this is some kind of created, purposely created thing, just for this, just for this purpose. It's obviously crookedly soldered over here, as you see. It's pretty crooked. It says XC2090 on it. Has two resistors, two capacitors are missing. Probably part of some sort of RC filter. Probably. And pops your uncle. So essentially, you're firing up your signal right here, which just goes straight to this shitty looking head. I'm just wondering if this is like real head playback header. This is just specifically designed for this purpose. Alright. Let's put it all back together because there is nothing to see here. So, yeah, this is very, very, very simple. So let's just reassemble those cogs. In a way, I think this is how they, yes, this is how they're supposed to be here. Okay, next one. This tiny one goes in here, I think. This one... I don't really know. This one probably goes in here. Mm -hmm. Over here and... Over here. So when capstan gonna rotate, capstan pinch roller gonna rotate, it, this shit all gonna rotate. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. That's uh, it's neat, neat construction. Uh, clearly, this is to trick the some of the cassette decks that um, this is proper tape mechanism because otherwise they'll be hell confused. Okay, let's. There is nothing else to see here. It's pretty basic. So left, right channel wire directly to the head. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see now. So, I got it. I got it. I got it. It's very hard to open it. Again. Because of those long, long... Mm. Okay. So, now I got it. So, this is to be able to direct this wire in all positions you need. Either like this like that and so on and so forth so i think i would need it in my situation like on this side yes it's good that's really actually neat it's really neat not sure how what kind of shitty sound this thing gonna produce but design the way they designed it is neat cool let's just put it those stupid little tiny screws back and try to use it. So in order to test this device I prepared my test equipment. Cassette player. 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter. Actually this is not necessary. A headset. My all-time favorite ATH Pro 5X studio monitor headset. This is we're gonna be listening to and we're gonna connect it straight to the player a headset output this thing will be connected to my phone Wink. and that's gonna be Galaxy S10 so I have prepared some YouTube uh, free to use music um, okay far apart let's see what's happening here uh, you working okay let's pop this over here without closing the and start. Whoa! Sounds like shit. Okay, well, it does play. But it plays pretty shitty. That's number one problem. Number two, those cogs are rattling like no tomorrow. 
So. Okay, in order to actually play something, or hear something, I mean, I have to press... Hmm. Okay, well, let me try something here. It does play, though. I hear it. It sounds like shit. And as you hear it, clearly one channel sounds louder than another one um, because I think this thing is totally misaligned. First of all, those cogs are going out for sure uh, because this player doesn't care if uh, this take out, uh, pick up, uh, sorry. Yeah, exactly. If this one rotates or not, take out, I guess. This is pick up, this is release, take out. I don't know how you call it. Anyways. Uh, so it just doesn't care. This number one problem. Number two, this is totally misaligned. I'm not sure if this is the problem with this head or a problem with the whole positioning of the cassette because of this wire. You have to have to try to play with both to see uh, what's gonna help me. But so far it works. Crappy, but works. And definitely those cogs are going out. It looks nicer with cogs, but... Yeah, I have to think how would I properly align this. loud actually it looks like alignment is paramount here okay so what left here is to try this thing in my tape deck to see if that gonna help or to see how that gonna sound so here I have my Sony deck and let's give it a shot yeah, I removed already this front panel, it was sort of like interfering, but here we are. It, it, it does play something, but it doesn't actually play for a while. Hmm, if you pay attention, this thing does not rotate. There's something wrong here. Maybe I do have to pull those cogs out anyways. Okay, let me try. So now when I removed all cogs from this cassette, let's give it a try. I hope it's gonna spin freely. All right. Yeah, it's... it's I'm not sure where it's... But it's working. I even hear some music coming out of the... All right, and level is pretty high actually. Obviously when you poke it here and there, it changes. So this is kind of side effect or bad side of all this contraption that it is not stable. So you poke it, it changes. You press it here, it changes. 
you move it up it changes you move it down it changes yeah this is sucks but if you find a good position of it it's gonna actually work relatively decent all right okay as you saw it obviously works in the cassette deck uh, not just in, 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 in a Walkman but I have to pull all these little bits and pieces out in order to have it uh, working okay let's put it here without all those bits and pieces and see what's gonna happen mm, yeah I've changed the wiring okay that's good So it still works. That's good. So yeah, I'm not sure what circumstances those cogs are necessary. Yeah, but in, the, in my case, I'm gonna just keep them in a little baggy. And um, the only uh, very interesting thing I noticed when I put this in my Sony K60 uh, tape deck, it was playing right away. I was hearing uh, music through the headset. So this is essentially means that this deck has it had play playback head connected all the time and outputs the uh, signal from uh, the playback head. All, all the time pretty much and I'm wondering why you when there is no mm, anything playing you still can hear noise well this is I guess why because essentially in that particular a uh, tape deck the head is always connected when I tried the same in Harman Kardon a uh, CD 401 it was not playing so essentially it commutates on and off the head so this is very interesting uh, thing I never actually uh, thought about but looks like there are different scenarios when the head is connected and it's not so in this device actually helped me to figure this out there is only one uh, very specific uh, something else very specific that for example you cannot use it with three head decks so if you have three head decks the alignment would be off yeah, so uh, if uh, one head deck, one playback head, or playback and record, uh, or two head deck essentially you are using, your playback will nicely match with this one, but when you have two uh, combined uh, heads, like record and playback separately, it won't be misaligned, so this would be not aligned properly over the a playback head so yeah I noticed this with CD 401 it was it was playing but very quietly much quieter than uh, Sony K60 hmm but anyways it's still pretty handy device uh, to poke around to play with like Walkmans I also thought thought about something for example can I use this to demagnetize uh, heads at least uh, two head playback devices because technically I can just uh, record some kind of sinusoidal signal fading sinusoidal signal on the phone or any other device and just like play back uh, the, that thing continuously and theoretically or supposedly it will demagnetize the head what do you guys think about this idea using this thing as a demagnetizer hmm interesting right I will do some experiments later. Anyways, that's gonna be it for now. Yeah, we have here cassette adapter, something from like 20 or 30 years old technology, but still might be useful today. And this one probably will do the job, a crappy job, but I will do the job. I'm never gonna run probably spectral analysis of this to see what kind of um, frequency response it has in comparison to actually cassette. Uh, it's not necessary. Maybe if I have too much time on my head, hands I will do it. So thank you guys for watching and see you next time.